Is that coming through? Yeah. I hear it. Live from the Plutopia News Network, this is the Plutopia Happy Hour, and we're happy to be here. In fact, hell, we're happy to be anywhere these days. And the usual... I would say it's the Plutopia Hippie Hour. Hippie <laughs> Hour. Ah, that's hey, good you hippies, call. get a job, get a haircut. That's no, right. that's me. That's I, I, no? I do need to get a haircut. But anyway, the, the unusual suspects are here. Susie Sheeler. Me, Scoop Sweeney, and of course, over there in the uh, uh, window, looks like. Uh, don't, don't jump, John. Uh, <laughs> it's no. John Lubkowski. He's. I uh, swear. He, he, every, he's about to jump out the window and escape into the South Austin. <laughs> well, oh, every, every time, every time we stream to Facebook, it handles it a little bit differently. Ah, yeah, it that's, does. Their, that's their way of keeping you on your toes. That, it's yeah, just mysterious. That, that's the Elon Musk uh, thing of. Uh, Actually, that's a John Mackey thing. John Mackey <laughs> used to do grocery resets like once a month. And oh, so you God. had to walk by stuff, you know, <laughs> that you normally wouldn't see. And, What's a grocery uh, reset? <laughs> oh, H E B does that all the time. It drives me crazy. Yeah. They move oh, you mean everything. like move everything around? Yeah. Yeah. Shuffle. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want people to get complacent. Yeah, shuffle well, the deck so they can't find what they want, but they'll find you something wanna, they don't need. <laughs> yeah, you want to put new product in front of them, like something they've never tried. So once they start looking for stuff, they're I mean, that was the the theory behind it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it drives me crazy, and that's the short drive in my case anyway. Oh, it drove us crazy, too, because we were the ones who had to stay up overnight. Like, we had shifts that started at midnight and went all the way until 8 a.m., and we reset that entire store. It was a nightmare <laughs> every three months or so. It's good retail, though. It keeps those people confused so they'll buy stuff they didn't think they needed and probably didn't need. But they exactly. what was on their list. <laughs> I wonder if they continue, if they still do that, you know? It's all well, about do. the end caps, you know? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. H-E-B is, I mean, it's a regular thing with them. I, I would get used to, you know, this stuff is over here and it's over here and they, get, they have to shuffle the deck and it's like, well, it's all different. <laughs> Yeah, there was one time when the uh, one of the grocery guys did an end cap, and he spent. It was like this huge end cap of sodas, and they were di different colors. And it was back to school, and he spelled out back to school with these sodas in different colors. But he <laughs> spelled back with. A two C's instead of a K. So to go back through and take everything down and rebuild the entire thing, and it, it was like, oh, yeah. that was spelling is important. Hard. Yeah, <laughs> don't and don't forget the punctuation. That's that's a very interesting typo. <laughs> yes, it was. It was like, oh, this is you. Are you going back to school? Are you? Are you going back? <laughs> Hey, before we get too, started too uh, deeply into our subject matter, whatever the hell it is, uh, we should mention that our guest uh, wasn't able to come tonight because uh, he's he, can't he's can't talk. He's got he laryngitis, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's that, terrible. That's a pretty yeah. good excuse for not showing up to talk because it's and, true. Uh, <laughs> it is. Well, we so wish true. him well. Yes. Yes. Can, I hope you're doing better because yeah. I know he has some stuff to say. Well, my, uh, you know, having been in the voice industry many times, honey, lemon, and whiskey is the mm. cure all. I mean, it may not necessarily cure your voice, but uh, you don't give a shit after it's over with. My mom oh, did whoa. that to us as children. Oh my God, we've been framed. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I didn't that do it. I'll step into the spotlight. One. I've been framed. I like that. That's pretty fun. Oh, good God. one. I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
It looked like a uh, display at the Three Stooges Museum. <laughs> hey, hey <laughs> So I wonder why Nick lost his voice. I wonder if he's been able to find it. I don't know. I hope he does find it. It, it could be in a box in Mar-a-Lago. We don't know. Mm-hmm. A lot of things <laughs> disappeared there. You, know, you just never know. You just never know. That guy is... I wow, what's happening? What's happening to this country? <laughs> well, how long did he stay in uh, in testimony today? He was supposed to be giving testimony, wasn't he? Well, he he just pled the the fifth the entire time. Again, so, oh, can, yeah. But did he break his record? Because it was like four hundred from the last one. No, it, it, he didn't break his record, but he did. You know, this is the one they expected him to actually speak in i didn't and, expect him at all <laughs> well most people oh hey look at that Mo- oh, oh that, that was kind Welcome of the, the theory <laughs> hey look at that oh my god I'm, you I'm, made my green screen that is so cool and of course you're you're the big head you know it's it's mr uh-huh. big head john uh-huh. john's got a big head you know it's, we try not to point it out but there, oh, there we go. There we the go. incredible shrinking That's man. Right. <laughs> so we should talk about. So we said we were going to talk about current events. Yes. And uh, What's there's current? a few things going on, right? I right? yes. What do you guys think about uh, the Kevin McCarthy pos- potentially being ousted? Oh, he's being ousted. Well, yeah. Well, I missed he- that one the debt ceiling he won't he won't raise it to to be you know a clean debt ceiling and uh the you know the democrats are saying well tell us what it is that you want and he he's saying <laughs> he's saying yeah da, 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 and um <clears throat> the other republicans are saying this you know what we want and and they're talking about yeah, there are rumors apparently C- MSNBC and CNN have reported that and Midas Touch have reported that um, there that he could be on his way out. It only mm. takes one. It only takes one. You know, if, if yeah, it sounds like he, they're probably, you know, the uh, crazy people in his party are probably making such insane demands to go in mm-hmm. that uh, even someone like him is like, I can't go off and say that. These people Mm-mm. are nuts. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you're not on the crazy train, uh, you, you're going to get booted from your office. It's, that's the way the Congress And he runs made himself, days. he totally, it, it, you know, I'm, I don't know how else to say it, but he totally, you know, cut, cut his power off. Is You know, he just... He he let him that he gave him the knife and they castrated him right there in front of everybody. They and, castrated him. Oh my God! And I and you know it could be a Democrat. I hate it when that happens. It. Rocky Mountain and Republican have, oysters. Seem exactly. To not well, me. no. Originally, exactly. they talked about making Trump the Speaker of the House. Do you think they're going to do that? No, I think Steve Scalise is going to be the Speaker of the House. Oh, interesting. Yes, I think that, he is. That sounds less crazy, actually. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. he, he's crazy, but uh, it's, it's not. Nobody's crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he's not Trump or Giuliani crazy. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that's that's a big stretch there. Right, <laughs> right. Oh my God, I keep doing that. Um, yeah, Giuliani. I just saw him on. Finally, he's been like hiding or something. I would. <laughs> I know, and I just saw him on something. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I guess he's coming back out and talking. Uh, he's Fifth Amendmenting all over the place too. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't. So what happens? I mean, it, it, you know, I have some. I was hanging out with my aunt Sissy today, who has been a uh, a paralegal and worked with lawyers for the majority of her life, including my uncle, who's a defense attorney. And um, I, I just, you know, she says, I just, it's, it's such a hard case for Dominion to bring, not the other case, not the civil case and the criminal case in New York, but the Dominion case to, to win against Fox. She said, it's almost, 
she said they'll have to settle. It's almost unwinnable. Hmm. I don't know. The stuff I've been reading about what they've uncovered, because they were able to shelter Rupert Murdoch mm -hmm. from uh, being uh, supposedly involved, and they've uncovered a lot of connections where turns out he was executive chairman and that in, in any company <laughs> in this country if you're the executive chairman and somebody below you does something you don't approve of you either fire them or you make them do what you wanted and right. that's right. well and the impact the of that right. is it, th that had an impact on discovery mm -hmm. uh, there were things that they didn't disclose that they should have disclosed because I communications that involved Rupert mm -hmm. and Ru Rupert's uh, communications were somewhat excluded because they were saying or they were implying that it wasn't involved. So now discovery is ramped up and they're finding all these other things that had not been disclosed and the judge was not happy. Oh, that was uh -uh. very unhappy. And in fact, that's yeah. the sort of thing that gets you into deep legal doo-doo when you yeah. are caught, you know, basically hiding, you know, the important stuff that they wanted from you. And you said, oh, no, we don't have that. It didn't exist. He had nothing to do. It's like, well, explain this away, Skippy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I have <clears throat> quite a few family members, all of them, who read the Wall Street Journal. Some of them, that's all they read other than their local papers and their small town generally papers. But um, some of them are Democrats who read the Wall Street Journal just to you know, get the other side. And I have found <clears throat> since 2016 that the Wall Street Journal does not report on a lot of stories, a lot of well, stories who, are just who ignored. owns the wall street journal <laughs> that's what i say and and i get a lot of pushback that's like well you know it, the they're they're different they're they're journalists and stuff like this now i just you know i remember when when he he was elected they literally came out and said we will never call him a liar a and they never have mm -hmm. and it's i think yeah, I think Murdoch, like you say, I'm um, see he owns it. He must have he must have control over what's free being printed. I although I don't think that what's well, his name? Never, Bezos. I never I don't think Bezos gets involved with the Washington Post at all. But well, I do think Murdoch does. Supposedly not. I mean you never really know for sure, but <clears throat> again, it's never as simple as uh I mean, when somebody owns a publication of some kind, they may be like involved sometimes and not other times, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not cut and dry. So it's hard to know exactly how his influence is felt at the Wall Street Journal, at least, because, uh, what you want is to at least have the perception that a publication is is independent from the politics of its owner. Uh, now, with Fox News, there's been there's I mean, there's never been that implication, hmm. though the news division has tried to stay independent from the propaganda division. They bleed into each other quite a bit. Now they're uh, all gone too. The the journalists, journalists some of the best of them. Yeah, a lot of the best of them. Yeah, the people that didn't suck are all gone. The people that <laughs> were willing to kiss up to Murdoch are still I think, in power. I think Chris Wallace's father visited him in the night and was like, <laughs> "Get out." <laughs> I'm well, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an interesting <laughs> thing, though. I mean, like Rupert Murdoch apparently now is not happy with Trump. And uh, and Fox News appears to be distancing itself from Trump. Mm. And the question is whether whether that will persist. Uh, some of the talking heads that uh, are, are some of the morons at Fox News. I shouldn't call them morons. That's not very Tucker nice. Carlson. Tucker Carlson. OK, actually, I, Tucker Carlson. He is yeah, a moron. Yeah, he so, so inter he interviewed Trump last night. And he hates Trump, but he had know, to suck up I, to him in the interview. 
I, I'm just like, what the fuck are you people doing? Who are you? Why? What is happening here? Oh, it's easily explained. It's easily explained. The ratings take a hit <sighs> if they back off too much. So they're kind of trapped. I mean, that's kind of what happened when when they reported that Trump was losing the election. People started leaving Fox for Newsmax or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the places that were OK, just kind of lying about the, the election. And uh, and, you know, that I mean, that shows up in the Dominion Discovery and some of the the text messages that people were sending and so forth. It's like, oh, my God, our ratings are going to take a huge hit here. We have to we have to back off on this story that Biden won the election. We can't go around alleging that Biden won the election. We have to say that either it's still up in the air or that Trump won. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, well, we're going to lose our we're going to lose our in the ratings. We're going to we're going to lose our yeah. Uh, viewers. Yeah. Fox, but then, yeah. Well. Yeah. They they got uh, the message you know, when they started you know, backing away. The uh, that's when Trump started doing his truth social thing. And that's if you've gone by that, that's that's just a nightmare over there. But, you know, Mark, yeah. <clears throat> he's only doing this for business reasons because, I mean, he got in trouble in the U.K. because he had his news people for News Corp hacking the phones of celebrities and the royal family and uh, individual citizens. And it's only he, he, <clears throat> he finally resigned from News International, which was over that whole bunch there yeah, after it got disclosed that they, they were doing truly tr criminal activities right? in the UK. That kind of thing is a criminal offense. And they were looking at uh, you know taking him away. So he backed out of that only for business reasons. But he's kept up that kind of thing. But when he gets caught, then he goes, oh, no, that wasn't us. I had nothing to do with it. And he's going to continue doing that. I'm just, I still, sometimes I will see a picture of him and I will just, for some reason, this shock, this kind of like it, I can feel it wash over me. I can feel my jaw dropping thinking he was the president of the United States. He was elected the president and it's still just shocking sometimes to me that this moron who doesn't, who can barely speak, you know, his native tongue is, it, it was the president and may be again. And what are your thoughts on that? Do you guys think that he'll be the nominee? Because you know how they, like the front runners always come out really strong, like DeSantis, but then usually they kind of like, oh no, they fade in the background a little bit later. What do you guys think is going to happen? I don't know. Uh, here's something. I, I think I'm, it's I'm hard to predict. At, yeah, I'm looking at okay. the uh, Wikipedia entry for Murdoch. It says here that when he was studying philosophy, politics, and economics at Worcester College in Oxford, he had a bust of linen in his room and came to be known as Red Rupert and was a member of the Oxford University Labor Party. So he's... He changed uh, his tune. He, he just like going with the flow. It's like, yeah, I'll be the, I'll be with this because it was popular. Oh, oh now being a Nazi is popular. Let's, let's move over there. Oh, <laughs> okay, well, he, he's you know, the, flexible. <laughs> the, pro the problem is that politics is like, crap you know um, <laughs> reaching for power and trying to hold power uh, it destroys something in your soul and people who actually choose to follow politics uh, are can be very corruptible mm -hmm. and can change in ways that are unpredictable now there's a lot of people who have very strong principles and and don't become corrupt. 
And we know yeah. some of those people. I mean, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of good examples right now in the Congress and uh, the Senate, and they're mostly Democrats. Mm -hmm. Because the Republican Party has been infiltrated with corrupt influences. And um, um, it's not a hard thing. I mean, it's, it happens pretty easily. People get seduced by the dark side of the force. That's for sure. So That's the true. question is, considering that they've done this very strategically and over time they've sort of built their power and they're at, at the point where um, you have minority rule in many parts of the country. Uh, a lot of the power grabbing has been happening at a state level. Mm -hmm. So the question is how we how we sh shift away from corrupt politics and how we get back to uh, an era of civility and uh, politics based on principle. And I think that it's possible to do that, but I think it's going to be, I mean, because I think we've been here before. Shoot, the, around the time of the Civil War, it was, the country was in a similar mode, you know, there was a similar, um, a similar yeah. polarization. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it was, yeah, I guess so. You're right. And it was being stoked by each, you know, it was being stoked actively. Yeah, um, and the Confederacy tried to have a national divorce. We've heard yeah. somebody talking about that recently. It's yes, the same we have. thing. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You know, uh, this is the sort of thing that led to a civil war then, but it was easier to like separate the the uh, the polarity was by state back then. But you have, and actually, I think so. In some parts of the country, those people were not a minority. I I think they're a minority in in many states where they actually rule right now. Mm -hmm. But they mm -hmm. have managed to uh, set up a minority rule in those states. Well, the secessionists, you know, there's, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the legislator here. In Texas that just, he's, I think he's a, a new one that just introduced a bill, you know, uh, that kind of hints at secession. But he's part of that group that wants to secede from the United States and form the Texas Republic again. Oh. And those guys are around all the time, and it's just yep. uh, it's just amazing that you know these people have no concept of the legalities and the realities of you secede from the United States, all of your senior citizens will no longer get Medicare because they're in a foreign country. They're citizens of a Foreigners. foreign country. They don't Actually, qualify. That's not true. And you will that's... have a big crowd of senior citizens with torches and pitchforks headed to the Republican Party headquarters like, what the hell yeah. did you do? Well, but, but there's people who live outside the U.S. but get Social Security. Yeah, you can still, and I found that out because I'm one of those people who will eventually want to live out of the country. And the you know it's the retirement the disability the fact is is that's your money you paid into it so it's your money it it doesn't matter if you live in in another country what would matter i think is if we were at war with that country but well, it's your money so you get to spend it wherever you want to yeah the true believers though it would require you to de denounce your citizenship if your how, how can you be a real texas citizen if you have dual citizenship you have to be yeah. true it, to trek to texas and give up that citizenship yeah, that money you know that they you would have be doing to be that. strong strong people and just say i'm giving up all of the money because i i think it's more important <laughs> To be racist than to have enough money for rent and food. You yeah, of morons. course, of course. Well, you know what? I really, honestly, I, I don't. If it means 
I would be safer as a gay person, as a woman, uh, and my friends would be safer. Um, you know, people of color. I would move. I would move out of here. I'm very disappointed in Texas. Mm-hmm. I'm very disappointed in Texas. I would leave, and I'm fifth generation. Well, but I would yeah. leave. Why? What? So, what is the source of your disappointment? Well, is it know, strictly it, the state government? It's. It is it, honestly. It's the government general. It's the Republican Party, and it is the uh, the active aggressive way that women are being attacked uh, by these white guys in charge who don't have the first idea what lady parts look like uh, i that is huge for me you, you you take that away what's next so well might, yeah. might you feel better if there was a truly effective democratic party in the u.s and uh, in texas rather Oh, yeah, that's what, yes, but that's what I'm saying. But, At this point, we're red, we're very red. And if we're going to have a well, national but we have a very, force, we have a, a weak opposition, right? The, the Democratic Party in Texas is not very effective. Yeah, it's never if, been for a long time. <laughs> right. Yeah, and if, if the Democratic Party became real, truly effective here, that would be different. Uh, but I'm saying, like, right now, as it stands, I, if we did a national divorce, I would happily leave this state, not because this is my home and I love Texas and I am, I mean, I'm a Texan, my God, I'm very proud of that, but I am, I am horrified by what has happened. I can't believe, I, I, I I am so glad Ann Richards isn't here to see this. Mm. I'm just Democratic party in Texas. I, I was, uh, able to watch it uh, implode or explode oh. back when they decided to be a more liberal party in the 1972 election. And the people that were the old Democratic Party, the old racist, very prejudiced wing of the Democratic Party, all left and became Republicans. That's when the Republican Party gained strength and got a lot of money in from all of these rich former Democrats who were pissed off because they couldn't be racist anymore in their politics. And that, I feel like that is that's what killed the Democratic Party in Texas. And don't so you, you think, think that's it, what's you think it was strictly now? about race? Was no, it strictly it was, about yeah, race? A, a lot of things. Race was one, but states' rights, which was kind of a be a dog whistle for 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 racism but yeah. it was just the matter of control it was you didn't want all these these hippies it was, stuff. <laughs> they saw it was the less, hippies joining the democratic party and that was it for them they left <laughs> it was just i think i think the 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 biggest part of it was states rights because they were able to say we can have slaves here or we can do this here. And yes, slavery was a huge part of that, but they wanted they wanted people to stay out of their business. Whereas when we went kind of more liberal, we're saying maybe we do need, you know, some rules here. Yeah. And I feel like that's what's happening now because there are so many Republicans who have renounced their Republicanship and have some of them have not moved on and said they're Democrats. Uh, but I think that a, I think that they will vote for the Democrat who's on the ticket, which unfortunately I think is going to be Biden. And I heard even worse news. He is going to be primaried by RFK Jr., who yeah, is an anti-vaxxer. Up. Yeah. He RFK even just... Jr. is not going to get any votes, though. He's, yeah. I mean, Talk he's about not, a <laughs> not, not a super popular guy. So yeah. you don't, he's, I, I, cause I don't know very much about him except for he's an environmentalist and an anti-vaxxer. And so, um, I, all I could think was, is that at best he might t- peel off a few, you know, c- 
crazy uh, environmentalists, and I don't mean to say that all environmentalists, I'm talking about the really extremists. Maybe he'll get those. I don't know. But I, and we do have an anti-vax kind of group on our on our on the Democrat side too. The you know the they believe in a, a holistic medicine and this sort of thing, and they don't believe in that kind of stuff. So. The new age yeah. anti-vaxxers, yeah. Yeah, they could pull away voters there too, but I, I don't think he'll get the, he won't get the primary, which leaves us with Biden, which is, will he get a new vice president? Uh, she's not, or, I mean, they're going to have to really start pushing her because the chances of him making it through another term are, you know, not great. I, I think he could do it, hmm. but... You know, you just I'm, don't. I'm really, I'm not completely convinced that Biden's going to be the candidate. Yeah, because, yeah. You know, with, with, with RFK Jr. in there, even if he doesn't have a big bunch of support, he could easily be the Ralph Nader uh, factor who, you know, helped, exactly. helped bring us George Bush. And that's, yep. It's a, it, they don't have to be great. They just have to be there enough to suck up the crazy people who will mm -hmm. vote for anything. And, like Ross uh, Perot. <laughs> and, yeah, of the Ross Perot factor too. You know, that's, it, it's dangerous <laughs> when you have somebody that, like that who just shows up and you know they're not gonna win, but they're gonna suck away enough votes to where maybe the other party wins. Yeah, you exactly. Know, you, you, know, you know who should run for president. I'm really other clear on this point. Other than you, okay. yeah. Al Franken. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know yeah, what? Al Franken. He's the guy. Here's what I think about that. I think it's a brilliant idea. However, I do not think that the American people will put a Jewish person in as president for another another couple of cycles. I just don't see it happening yet. I, I, there's a big anti-Semitism thing going on right you now. You know, I and and it, everybody yeah, but it's says, in the Republican so, Party. But they say we're a Christian nation too, so you know it's and and a lot of Democrats say that they all go to that that damn breakfast, and you know that the the whatever those right wing Nazis are put on the prayer the national prayer mm -hmm. breakfast, they all go to that. You know, even the Democrats, they all go. So, yeah. well, the other person I, that I that I favor is was Al Franken's mentor, and that's Amy Klobuchar. Oh, I like Amy. Yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah, I like Al. I would love Al. That he would be my my first choice. But I just don't think that America will put a Jewish person in, yeah, and, in and, charge. And he's too well-educated. Yeah, you don't want a well-educated person in there who actually you know, can speak and write the English language correctly. <laughs> but I would oh, like well, him. Matt. He would be a great speechwriter for whoever does run against, you know, well, he's against great, Trump. He's a great you know, improvisational speaker. I mean, some of the stuff that he just you know pulled out of nowhere was way more you know insightful than a lot of stuff from people who had big speech writers he, yeah he was a writer maybe <laughs> maybe he can run and just like stay in long enough to just embarrass trump i mean insofar as that he is capable of being embarrassed which i think is that somebody tells him people are laughing at him and he gets mad i think i don't think he's actually embarrassed i think he's just mad um but i, I yeah i that would be great if we could get a couple of comedians in there that are running but that are also you know like a Zelensky. <laughs> yeah we just you know, actually <laughs> what biden needs is he needs some, some 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 writers. That's what made Saturday Night Live. It wasn't the actual people that were the stars. It was the damn writers. Of, and, uh, and some of the best of them were the women writers. Yeah, there was a lot of really good. That's a, like Amy Poehler and, and Tina Fey. It's yeah. true. Yeah, he it's just true. needs to be fed something that more than what they're. I'm sure he has writers, but they're all you know lackeys of the of the Democratic Party. He needs some some. Uh, 
loose cannons in there to throw him some stuff that really gets people's attention because yeah. a lot of his, lot of his uh, speeches and press conferences are just dastardly. I mean, if you yeah. want if you want to get some good sleep, just sit in on one of those press conferences. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, but the problem is that Joe Biden is too old. Yes, he's just what, yeah. too old. Yeah, and we're, we're allowed to say that. Far be it from. Yeah, we can say that because we're old people too. I, I mean, can say that because I'm an American, and I and this is ridiculous. You know. Well, I, I mean, I I know what I deal with as an older person, and uh, he's a lot. He's somewhat older than I am, and I, I just think that. I mean, this was fine for him to be president right now. At the time, we were talking about him being like an interim president, and he even said at one time himself that yeah. he wouldn't run again. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, he didn't say that for very long, but he did say that at some at some point. Yeah. And <sighs> and that's kind of what I was expecting, and I was expecting someone else to to step up. And no uh, one, no one, and he hasn't even tried to groom Kamala. Mm -hmm. We have a so, we have kind of a similar problem with Diane Feinstein, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, she, yes. She's, she's yeah, she, gone. <laughs> well, she's not planning to run again, right. at least. But she uh, she really is not doing very well right now, and there's uh, some evidence that she is experiencing cognitive decline to the extent that it makes it hard for her to actually be an effective legislator. But no, she doesn't. She doesn't. She won't step down. She's not resigning. Well, I, yeah, I, I'm feeling some of that myself. I mean, if I was running for dog catcher, I wouldn't vote for me. It's like ah, that old guy. He, <laughs> he's going to probably be found out and half naked in the street, mumbling to himself. So, no, no, no. Let's let's get some <laughs> younger think, people in there. Get some younger women in there doing this stuff. I hate, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't think this is ageist. I think this is humanist. This is patriotic. You know, you, I think there should be a cutoff. Like there's a driver's license cutoff. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to keep going, getting tested. And I, I really think that an 80 year old person is too old to be negotiating high level nuclear proliferation type deals i i just yeah mm -hmm. i don't mean that in any i mean i i think up to like i would say that maybe the cutoff would be 65 right and then serve maybe one term that that would be have to be your second term would be if you were 65 years old i think because then at that point it's just like we need to have the finger on the pulse of the you know people who are still living here for another 20 30 years and the younger kids that we can watch to bring up i just there's got to be some kind of cutoff it's it, it's too much don't you well, think? the other thing is that I, I i believe that there's something to be said for having a charismatic president you know yeah uh, in, in that they can be very effective leaders uh, assuming that their head's in the right place and that they're not like a truly corrupt and manipulative charismatic leader like some presidents we've had recently uh, yeah but but who who can you think of in the democratic party that's particularly charismatic not a lot of the the front and center folk i mean I, i'm sure you know there are, I know a lot of people who are Democrats that I, I would vote for before I'd vote for some of these people. But yeah, I, you, know, you don't, yeah. if you're not a, in politics, you probably don't want to try to get into it because I've looked at those folks and I would never want to be involved no. in being a politician because I've seen what it does to those people. It's just I think dastardly. Swalwell. Swalwell, I like, but I don't know enough about him to say that I would. But but I do think he has more charisma than most others, which isn't saying a lot. I um, like Cory Booker. I do too, but and uh, I like Cory Booker partly because I I have this vision of Rosario Dawson as first lady. Oh, that <laughs> okay. would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the problem that we would have with Cory is that people on the other side perceive him 
as someone they can't work with just out of the gate because he's passionate and they 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 see things that we think are good in a they twist it around into a bad light you know um we would say he is passionate and then they say he's aggressive you know that sort but of thing that's kind of what we need in the democratic I, party because oh, yeah there's not yes. a lot of passion and <laughs> and but the, he did not do the, well the Biden, last time yeah. <laughs> so, but i i agree i think someone like cory booker i i would i would get behind him i i would like for him to to just settle down a little bit because he's he's very he really is very accusatory of you know but he's also got some really good ideas and um i think another maybe another four years really getting season a little more season and a little bit how old is he he's like 36 maybe I've got socks that are 36. And I think they're wearing them right now. I think that's a good age, though. I think yeah. that he, yeah, maybe anything over, mm, I was, yeah, okay, 35 for s some people. <laughs> well, when I think about how I was at 35 or 36, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> I was yes. nowhere near clued in. <laughs> but it there were some while. people. But, now, now that I'm at the, this age, it's like, I'm not going to vote for me. We need somebody <laughs> that has the stamina to do all that dastardly stuff you have to do in politics. Like, exactly. It, it takes exactly. a lot of, you, you know, it takes your soul away for one thing. A lot of people that I used to admire when politics got through with them, they were like, there's a husk of a person left. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so proud that Nancy Pelosi stepped away from leadership. I'm just, you know, she she gets it. It was time, she and was, she knew it. Because <laughs> yeah, I got to see her and I covered her in press conferences when she was a newbie, and oh. she was full of fire and full of charm. And boy, I mean, could she kick you in the balls? I mean, she was one of those. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, but after you've been in power for so long, you know, power does corrupt you, and no matter who you are, it just does it because yeah. you have, and to, she was, you have to compromise and some people don't do well with compromise. It's fascinating that we've gone from what I think historians have even called her, which is the strongest speaker of the house that has ever been. And I, I don't know if that's true, but I've heard she that. She reached up the top of the list. And now we've got one vote McCarthy, you know? <laughs> I mean, wh what a, what a, I mean, that's a 180, crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah he, he, he's going to have to jump off the crazy train at some point. Either that or he's going to lose his mind. Because... Do you, do you know? Well, what crazy transfers? train, that gives me an idea. How's he uh -huh. asking for president? <clears throat> so wait, so here's <laughs> my question. Go. Does it? Oh, I don't remember what I was going to say. I had it. It was something about Carrie. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. World. No, that's all I right. I interrupted uh, you with Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, I, uh, I can't I'm all for that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd vote for Ozzy just because it would just make people lose their shit and, and you know the the chaos and then soon would allow people like us to you know get our shit together and maybe a Ozzy, Oz, <laughs> that how, did you watch his his reality show? Oh yeah, I, that was a big. I'm not. Fan. I'm still he's a big not, fan of Ozzy because he's just so deranged. I got. I to, can't have him as president. I, I'm I got sorry. to see him at a, at a few <laughs> press conferences back in the day in the Bay Area when I was doing the rock journalism thing, and he was he was a way smarter than he pretended to be. He dumbed mm. himself down to do the rock and roll thing because he said a few things. I, I had to look at my tapes. I, I've got tapes of all these kind of people. And uh, he he was interesting. I couldn't understand a word he oh, said. And and that also was well. A lot of it's because yeah, he's he he damaged his brain cells. Yes, quite a bit. Yes. Now, you know the drug abuse did make him into a different person. But back in that day, you know, he was 
just uh, he was a loose cannon that uh, had really good aim on the culture at the time. That's why, you know, uh, Black Sabbath had a really big following, and, uh, and it wasn't and a And you think he used workers. drugs? He didn't use drugs, did he? Uh, occasionally, he was known to, to dabble. <laughs> what was the biggest drug of choice when that you saw on on all of your ventures with rock and roll and and country and all everything that you did? Cocaine. 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 And was, and cocaine and crank. Uh, methamphetamine. Yeah. No. That, yeah. That no. came along later, but you know, in the in the seventies. Uh, in the 60s, too, but you know, 70s for sure, it was cocaine all the time. I went to the DJ conventions in L.A. and in Dallas in the mid-70s, and it was every DJ from all over, you know, in one big convention. Wow. And I'd have, if you'd l lined up all those lines in one line, it would probably have uh -huh. gone around the world. Oh, man. <laughs> so, okay, so, and that kind of explains why you know, a lot of the DJs were mm, short-lived. <laughs> right, right. So what about heroin? Did you see any of that at all? Uh, not really. Well, yeah. It, I mean, it it, it kind of came into after the summer of love in the Bay Area. Initially, it was all, you know, marijuana and uh, acid. And when things started to kind of fall apart, then heroin became... Uh, of a big influence, which pretty much is what destroyed the hate Ashbury, is when the yeah. you know, the, the smack dealers came in and people started dying right and left, and the right. ones didn't die were seriously fucked up, and, and hepatitis ridden, I'm sure. But that you know that was uh, kind of the the last gasp drug that I saw, you know when people their careers were on the skids and they were on the skids. And suddenly they're you know shooting up <laughs> heroin. Yeah, that may be why their careers were on the skids. Yeah, but it, it, it was kind of a you know chicken or the egg kind of thing. You know, which came first, the heroin or the bad career? <laughs> wow, that's a yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, this young uh, woman, maybe y'all have heard of her, uh, just via your kids or you know YouTube. But this Amanda Bynes kid, did you hear about this? She was suddenly I know who she, she is. She turned up, I guess maybe a year ago, walking the streets, and she had gotten a heart tattoo on her face. Mm -hmm. And she's a Nickelodeon kid or something. And all of those Nickelodeon kids just and Disney kids too just came out. There's like several YouTube channels dedicated to how fucked up these kids are oh, you know yeah. when um and and um, and then just like two nights ago she was walking around naked again in la and somebody you know picked her up and uh she they took they 51 50 her yeah uh, just like just like britney and, and they're going to and that's a good her. thing you know because the, the i i encountered so many of those folks and uh, when I would go down to record in L.A., we'd, we'd stay in, in, in Hollywood. And mm -hmm. I'd look out of the window of my hotel, which had uh, kind of a grassy area behind it, one of the few left. And uh -huh. there were all these people camped out there, and they all had guitar cases and uh, would, you know, were carrying the guitars and... around. And they were all seriously messed up. And wow. I would go out of the hotel and they'd immediately be like, hey, brother, you want to us? Give me some money. It's like, no, I don't want to. If you think die. I'm one of you, then you know I don't have any. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, yes. You know, so, well, the thing about Amanda Bynes is that she has a uh, an actual mental illness. She, she has right. a problem with a psychosis. Mm -hmm. So that kind of complicates everything. You know, being involved yes. with Disney would make you psychos psychotic well, a, because apparently the those people the, were treated. It's the same with Nickelodeon, too. And that's really, really bad because there's a guy named Dan Schneider who is Nickelodeon's, like, he, you know, some kind of genius about putting these shows together. 
and uh, and i think amanda Bynes actually may have been nickelodeon i could be wrong but uh like uh lindsey lowen uh, uh what's that other kid's name who did so uh, uh demi lovato you know these kids who well they were and some and the young men as well um uh zach's world what his friend was on there wilmer valderrama i mean he was a perpetrator yeah uh, uh selena gomez they mm-hmm. were they were groomed and were put in really uncomfortable positions and given very, very, uh, um, you, you, what is the word for you could take it two ways? Um, you know, it was, it was a line that would, an adult would go, Oh, and a kid would go, Oh, you -hmm. know, yeah, uh, double speak there. Well, let me, stand, yeah. Uh, yeah. Allow me to tell you my Nickelodeon story. Please do. And back uh, when I was doing concert production, my friends and I got involved with producing a really big deal at the uh, Selen, uh It was at the Arco Arena in uh, no no Selen Arena in Fresno, and it was for Super Sloppy Double Dare. That was one of their shows where they dropped green stuff on people. Oh, yeah, yeah. The green slime. That's the best. They called it GAC. And if you know anybody that knows cocaine, that was the rock and roll buzzword. You wouldn't say, I've got some cocaine. I've got some GAC. And I, we were just blown away when when the, they were saying this. And we, we oh asked my the guy who, who was the GAC master. The, I helped them mix up that stuff. Oh. It was stuff like applesauce and chocolate pudding and uh, all sorts of food coloring. And oh. the, the, we asked him, why, why did you call it GAC? He said, yeah. one of the Nickelodeon uh, suits was at a concert and he heard all the roadies under the stage talking about gack. Oh, how funny. Oh, <laughs> how said, funny. That's great. Why don't we call it gack? That would be and, so awesome. And, and hey. this guy was saying, we went, no, no, no. He said, no, no don't no, no. do it. It's going to be gack. It, it's going to be gack. It, it became gack. And that kind of oh. gives you an idea of the. Um, the, th- the thing that m- the Nickelodeon execs were up to. It's like the they first were time. Gack me with a spoon. The, fr- exactly. ah, <laughs> the first time I ever saw it, I was an early Nickelodeon watcher. And John, maybe you can find this to show. It was called You Can't Do That on Television. <laughs> and the, the, the it was just a bunch of kids. And that's where the green slime originated. Because if you said, I don't know, they would spill. Drop the bucket. <laughs> gack all over you. And that was the first, that was the first time I'd ever seen it. And, uh, it, and well, well, the the live show was huge. I mean, this was a big friggin' arena yes. indoor arena and they, there were probably 20,000 kids there and they were all going for the gag. What <laughs> year was that? Do you remember? That was 92 or 93 something oh, like that. Okay, see this is I, what I'm thinking of was like in 78. Mm. That was, so it was a little bit later. <laughs> um the it was yeah, it was one of our favorite shows was uh you can't do that on television. There was another one called Pinwheel that the that they used to that they used to do, and um, yeah, those gosh. Tour, those touring live things, uh, some of them are just diabolical. I mean, it, <laughs> it's they have no thing other than to sell a lot of merchandise and get a lot of buzz for whatever oh. channel is behind it. And, and there's. And most of them are just horrifying to watch if you have a even half a brain, I, which <laughs> I, I generally had a half to three quarters. <laughs> well, all right. So tell me about another amazing story. What's one of your favorite stories from being on the road and your favorite band that this, oh, the, what, what, <laughs> what is one of the most bizarre things that ever happened to you? Most bizarre is 
I took the band, uh, my business partner at the time, we took the band to the Atascadero State Mental Hospital for the Criminally Insane. We did a gig there. We were I was a, like, did you? We were a hard a rock tournament? band, but it was halfway to L.A., so whenever we had a recording session, we'd book one there and because it was like 400 bucks. All we did was go and play an hour. They gave us free accommodations on, in a house on the grounds of the prison, and, and then nice. we could go on to L.A. <laughs> wow, but, that's so cool. But, well... <laughs> It, and, and it was scary. very strange. <laughs> you know, the uh, our uh, one of the songs that the band did was the old uh, classic cocaine. You know, the <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> it, you yeah. it and and our uh, our bass player Randy, who ended up becoming a very famous uh, uh, news investigative reporter in L.A. Oh, TV. wow. But he was a great bass player, and he had introduced the song. He goes, "Hey, any of y'all go like cocaine?" And the oh, crowd of many of which were on drug offense go, yeah. <laughs> and you could hear the the guards go, <laughs> it like, oh, "Oh, it's going to be no. a riot!" And like, no, no, the no, song, the song. It's, a, it's a song. I didn't bring any. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that was just one of the minor things. There's a whole story that we don't have wow. on time tonight for me to wow. talk. We'll, we'll oh, do it sometime man. if we decide to talk about road stories. Because do you yeah, have in any? In fact, we never got into current events. Hey, that's oh, a... yeah. Well, do you have, <laughs> we have anyone? Current politics. <laughs> do you have anyone that you traveled with a lot of times? Uh, you know, uh, like more than once. Oh, I did a lot of shows with Eddie Money back when he was. Oh no, I mean like somebody who may have worked with you doing what you did that you could like tell us stories that y'all might oh, have shared other... or something. <laughs> Yeah, like, a lot oh of pe God. a lot of people, you know, including Eddie Money Sound Guy, who oh nice, <laughs> you know, lots of that stuff. I did I many shows could, with him. And, I bet uh, y'all could, could find some stories to tell us. I'd love to hear them. No, not to see if you know. Problem with those guys, the ones that are still working, they're not going to say anything because you know, <laughs> you know I, I don't care because I'm not doing. Yeah, you know, I don't even look for work in that field anymore. <laughs> Well, next time we're we're guest free, well, let's let's talk about your. I would love to hear more stories about that. It's just so fascinating, especially the time period and Kate Ashbury and that whole thing. Yeah, the fact that I survived it is yes <laughs> is a bit of a story anyway. And anyway, then there's that. But uh, <laughs> you know, I I'd, I'd, I'd rather. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take time to get my notes together yeah. okay well we got a guest next week i believe so on the 20th uh, perry parks will be here to discuss medical marijuana now, so now, uh now that's something yeah. i can talk about because i witnessed yeah. all of that i actually have recordings that i made at the kept the first hearings in california uh legislature about you know legalizing marijuana wow. and it's some interesting stuff. That's you really, that, that's cool. You, you know, that's my birthday, right? Happy oh, that would be great. And it's a special marijuana day. So uh, we'll celebrate you and we'll celebrate you by celebrating the day of 420. 420. You know, this right one, on. the clock on the wall behind me says 420 and it hadn't changed in a long time. oh my goodness well how did that did it just stop to get tired <laughs> it just, it just made, uh, either that or i manipulated it uh, I'm, it's like I, i'm not saying <laughs> uh but it should be a good show he's really awesome and he knows quite a bit uh about the fight for uh the military to use it therapeutically mm -hmm. and he's fascinating it sounds like you have seen a lot of it I, I personally i have personal stories about it but i wasn't i don't use it for ptsd but i think stephanie will be here screamish joy will be here and she will discuss her usage but i think exactly yeah yeah so we can hear his story too he's well yeah. and they just they just expanded the use of medical marijuana in texas yes 
legislation was, just was passed. It, was it for the, the really good stuff, or is it still the uh, the low octane uh, marijuana? God, it's the stupidest. Well, the thing. low octane marijuana is. Uh, isn't that? Are you talking about the Delta THC, Nine? It, no, the, yeah, no. The, the THC content. Uh, so you know, what, yeah, they. I'm they, not they, sure. They I don't know that they've restricted. Um, I thought it was it's up point, like three points. It's not clear. They went, it was from 0.5, uh, which is half, uh, uh, you know, and the stuff I get is like, what, 70? This is like 0.5. And they upped it this year to one whole one. Ooh. And it's just like, yeah, I know. It's like, what's the point? It's 200 bucks to, to be on this registry and to use this stuff. And it that's not, how who determined that was therapeutic? No one, because there are no studies on this stuff. Yeah. My grand, my uh, uh, old uh, older doctor said he would prescribe it in a heartbeat, but there's no studies for it that he can rely on and say this is why I did it. Yep. Well, according to the clock, clock on the wall and the music that's going to start playing, it's it's time to go. John. I had fun, you guys. We had all sorts of fun. Good night, everyone. John, are you still there? I think uh -oh. I'm muted. But, <laughs> yeah. Go. Here I go. And see you. See you next week. See good night. And I'll see you Saturday, Scoop. Okie dokie. Good night and good luck. You can stay in touch with Plutopia at Plutopia.io. On Facebook, look for at Plutopia News. On Twitter, it's at Plutopia. This is the Plutopia News Network, 20 minutes into the future.